need to learn to respect our spouses. You want to make your spouse happy, learn not to raise your voice. That is a cornerstone of a happy home. The minute we yell, the minute we yell, oh no, this is on both sides. The minute we yell, raise our voices and start screaming, trust me, that home is not going to be happy. You're setting a bad example even for your children. And you know what? You might have solved your problem, but because your folks or anyone else or your neighbors have heard you screaming and yelling, they will forever think that you guys don't get along. Forever. You crack the glass. May Allah not do that to us. So don't yell. Promise yourself today. I'm going to contribute to making my spouse happy. Starting off, not with the I love yous, I love yous, and then you, and then you yell at them. I love you. Okay, relax. Take it easy. There's a way of saying I love you. You don't need to scream and yell because now I'm scared. <laughs> really? You do? May Allah grant us ease. <laughs> So my brothers and sisters, you need to understand Wallahi al -Azim, that for the sake of Allah, you need to drop your voice. The, the Quran speaks about it. Allah says, min sawtik. You know, drop your voice, the volume, drop it down. Why? Because when you yell, you're like a donkey. The worst of sounds is that of a braying donkey. That's what the Quran says. Drop your voice, meaning drop the tone. Subhanallah. Don't yell. Don't scream at each other. Don't really discipline yourself. That's a very important word. We said focus. I'm now saying discipline, discipline yourself, your character on both sides. Don't scream, don't yell. And you know what? Never ever use abusive words from this day on. Why do I say from this day on? You might have just done it just before you came here. Don't use abusive words. Why use a swear word? You want barakah, you want blessings. Even jokingly, don't use the F word. Even jokingly, it should not be in your vocabulary. You're a believer. You want the blessings of Allah. You want happiness. You want continuity into the next generations when you've died. And you could die today, tomorrow, any day. That continuity will come by the help of the Almighty. You get His help by being disciplined, by being focused, by developing your relationship with Allah. So if you're going to draw Drop your, your tone for the sake of Allah, you're getting a reward and you're earning the blessings. If you are going to cut out bad language, trust me, you will have the happiest spouse. How many of us, our spouses can say, this wife or this husband never swears. If you can truly say that, put up your hand. Put up your hand. If you believe your spouse never swears, put up your hand high up. There are more men than women. You know why? Because it's the men who struggle. Mashallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you guys. I've seen the hands. But I was just trying to raise a point to say that the men will say, yeah, my spouse will never swear because she's a woman. She respects herself. But her hand is down. The same wife, her hand's down. Why? Because you're busy swearing big words. Swear words that are not even in the dictionary. Allahu Akbar. Not even in the dictionary. So the point I'm raising, let's get a little bit more serious. The point is, watch out for bad words. If it is an ibadah, an act of worship to say good words, if it is an act of worship to say good words, loving words, kind words, don't you think it is one of the gravest sins to say hurtful words, abusive words, when you're angry, you need to extinguish that anger almost immediately because that is your spouse. Those are your family members. Take care of them. If you have married a widow or a divorcee, you will earn a huge reward because that's what the Prophet ﷺ did. And you know what? They may have their own children to be kind to those children, to look after them. You will earn Jannatul Firdaus just by being kind to who? To children that may not necessarily be yours, but you've taken care of them because they were your spouse's kids. Subhanallah. To respect someone who's been divorced from you is an act of worship. You didn't get along, but that doesn't mean you need to have a whole paragraph of bad words describing your ex. Yet she was the mother of your children or he was the father of your children. No need to do all that. That is when you will have a current happy home. I'm looking for happiness. How will I get it? I told you primarily by getting closer to Allah. When you develop your consciousness of Allah, Automatically, these characteristics come within you. Automatically. 
That's why if you have a person reading five salah a day, six salah a day, they've added the tahajjud as well, but their tongues are bad. Trust me, there's something wrong with that prayer of theirs. I've known of people, they will read Quran like they are the most saintly people on earth. They will have a, you know, counter, counting how many times they've said astaghfirullah. I trust me, if you had closed that and stopped that and just been kind to your own daughter-in-law, for example, you would have probably earned Jannah in a more easy way than what you're doing. Because everything you're doing, the reward of it is going to those whom you're abusing with your mouth. May Allah forgive us. Wallahi, wallahi. What is very important for us to know is Islam is not only about Salah and Quran and Dhikr. That is a very big and important part of it. But more than anything, we need to be reminded again and again that Islam includes in it the way you treat those you live with. Many of us are Muslim just by name. That's it. We don't even know what Islam is all about. And for us, Islam is just about, you know, praying five times a day that I don't even feel like doing. A'udhu billah, a'udhu billah. But that's how people look at it. But more than that, subhanallah, we don't even realize Islam has given us the ingredient of happiness. You make Allah happy, Allah will make you happy. And I've only got six minutes remaining. Do you believe? You don't believe. Can I go beyond six minutes, inshallah? You heard it, mashallah. You heard it. Okay. So my brothers and sisters, I want to tell you something else. Many of us are not happy as spouses. Do you know why? Sometimes the way we managed our weddings, we displeased Allah on that day. Big time, big time, big time. And we want happiness. Did you hear what I just said? We got married. Allah gave us a spouse who is half of our deen, for example. It's going to be the decree of Allah for children who are going to be coming for us, who are going to be carrying the deen. We want happiness and goodness, but on that day we were naked, showing the cleavage for all the other friends of my husband to see. Woo Subhanallah. Yes, it's a reality. Go and see the people from poorer countries, how well they've dressed, how they've covered themselves, how the marriage and the wedding looks like an act of worship. With us, it looks like a party, sometimes like a nightclub. Yes, wallahi. And we're not even allowed to talk about it because they call you the Talibans, by the way. No. May Allah protect us. I am telling you, you are asking me how to make your spouse happy and how to increase the happiness in your home. Start off on the right footing. I challenge you, those of you who are going to be getting married, ask yourself, what I'm doing? Am I making Allah happy? If the answer is yes, you stand a great chance to make yourselves happy. Allah will make you happy. Am I making Allah angry, upset? Am I, am, am I treating the day I'm getting married as an act of worship? If the answer is yes, you're going in the right direction. If it's no, <clears throat> now some of you must be thinking, well, we've already done it. Now what? I can tell you it's not too late. You seek the forgiveness of Allah. Oh Allah, we did it in the wrong way. We were ignorant at the time. We were perhaps, you know, giving in to pressure of this side and that side and whatever else. And we did it the wrong way. Oh Allah, forgive us. Forgive us and we want to do everything correctly now. Allah will forgive you immediately. The problem is we don't even think that what we did was wrong. And you're looking for happiness. No wonder why there's yelling, screaming, shouting, swearing in the house. Because you know what? That's what you did to Allah. You insulted him the day he gave you the most happiness. You're determining the rest of your future. That's what's happening. You're, you're starting a new page in your life with a spouse that's going to bring about, inshallah, barakah and children and everything else. And on that day, you insult Allah. I'm telling you, it's a fact. I'm trying to word it in a nice way, okay? But it's a fact. The same things we do on the day of Eid. Eid is a day of happiness given by Allah for you to be happy, but we make Allah upset and angry. Allah is far from being happy with us on the day of Eid. So some of these things need to change. And the change is quite simple. It's not so difficult. We need to have more simplicity in our lives. We'll be happy. Subhanallah. So my brothers and sisters, if you've done things the wrong way, 
Now, there's no point in stressing about what you've done. You seek the forgiveness of Allah and Allah knows. And Allah will still give you the barakah. And He'll still give you the happiness. Don't cry over spilt milk. For as long as you sought forgiveness, Allah says, don't worry. We'll get all that milk and put it back in the bottle for you as pure as it was. Amazing. That's only Allah who can do that. No one else can. But from now on, you want to have functions and things that are connected to such a big ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's happiness that he's given you, have it in a proper way. It determines a lot of your future. It definitely does. Don't think it doesn't. It has an impact on what happens.